Amen. We are already sitting down. Just one minute. The book of Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. Pastor, we thanks for this privilege. Revelation 4, 1. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. I speak to somebody. A door will be opened for you in heaven. In heaven. What has not happened in heaven cannot happen on the earth. There are struggles you go through because nothing has opened for you there. When your fire increases, heaven also responds. I speak again to somebody. Heavens are opened over your life. Can I have that scripture? He said, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet. And he spoke to me. And what did he tell us? He said, come up where? Hida. And I will show thee things which must be after here. Every time God opens, there is a lift for the people. And I prophesy that CRM Jabi, you have entered a new season of a lift. Amen. There are certain things we can assess till our height changes. And that's why God is opening something so that your height can change. I speak again as God's servant. This is your season of lifting. You will see things you have not seen before. You will, you will enter dimensions you have never entered before. In response to that prophecy, can you pray for one minute? And say, Father, I've entered my season. Let there be a lift. Let my eyes be open. There are things I need to see at this level. Can somebody talk to God? Can somebody talk to God? Father, help me. Leka, leba, suta, lendiata. Ekalia, baloskea. Can I hear you praying? You came too early not to pray. The Bible encourages that when you come early, there should be some level of fervency. Let your sacrifice be acceptable. Can you open your mouth? I have entered a new season. If you are not aware, it's day seven. It's day seven. It's day seven of consistency. There is a new season this morning. It's a season of entering a rest. A rest. A rest as a church. A rest as a church. A new season in your business. A new season in your life. Can you prophesy that for another 30 seconds? Lekalia balande ketuso kalandiash. Ikateso toliash. In Jesus name we pray. Please be seated briefly. Flames for open doors. This should be part two. Flames for open doors. And in saying doors, I could also speak about gates. There's a scripture that said, He has broken the gate of where? Of brass. And he has cut the bars of iron asunder. Because certain gates are very strong. And let me tell you, Technology has also developed strongly whereby you can use fire to cut things. How many of us are aware that certain things are cut with fire? And that's why as your fire is increasing, there are doors that must cut open. I'm talking about doors that you have been trying to unlock and it's not opening. But I prophesy that as this fire comes on us afresh, those doors will melt. Those doors will open up. I wish that amen is sounding like somebody that believes me. But I need to yet lay some foundation quickly. Proximity is not the same as open doors. You can be close to a thing and it's not open to you. There are people that have proximity to big men, but yet the big man's heart is not open to them. They, there is so much around the man, but he will never remember the person. Listen, a door can be shut against your life. Not that the person is not aware you are there, but there's a barrier that will not allow the person to look at you and favor your life. But I came this morning with a higher grace of mercy. And I'm saying that that barrier that will not allow you to be seen and favored is about to be lifted in the name of Jesus Christ. In Psalm 29, 24, and in verse 9, very quickly, I'm trying to just take a charge and then we'll pray. In Psalm 24, and in verse 9, he said, lift up what? Your heads. What? Oh, you gates. Even lift them up. Yea, who? Everlasting doors. And who? 
and the king of glory shall what shall come in listen to me the king of glory is christ if jesus was resisted you will be resisted are you hearing me at all there was a gate there was an everlasting door who was saying that you can't pass this way and the reason is that there have been there have been ancestral lineages that tried to pass that place before christ came and nobody could pass and so when Jesus appeared, the same thing, that's why the Bible calls it everlasting doors. He's talking about ancient doors, things that stopped your father, things that stopped, are you hearing me at all? Things that stopped people in your lineage. And then suddenly you came on the scene and you said, I want to enter. And the door said, mm -mm, your type doesn't enter here. And Jesus Christ said, no way. He said, oh, you get to do what? Lift up your head. The man coming is not an ordinary man. I am the king of glory. I carry something my father didn't carry. Listen to me. You can't be ordinary and pass through things your father couldn't pass through that's why the matter of carrying fire is, is, is very important because there are things that that door will see and know that this person coming is different and I'm praying for you today God is about to, are you praying with me this morning God is about to put something on your head and even though they know you come from that lineage they know you carry something that that lineage doesn't carry is somebody hearing me at all? The Bible says, he said to the gate, oh you gate, be lifted. And he said, be lifted because there are doors that you open, there are some that you lift and keep it permanently lifted. How many of you remember when Lazarus, I mean, when Christ was to resurrect from the dead? The Bible said an angel came and did what? He rolled away the stone. But did he stop there? He sat on it. He was sitting on it so that other dead people can come out. I'm speaking to you. The door that we opened this morning, your family lineage, then we all pass through that same door. Yeah. That door of favor that is about to open. Come here. See, listen to me. It will happen in a hurry. What I'm teaching you will happen in a hurry. I have seen people who join church riding machine. Riding what? In less than two years, bought house, bought two cars, gave church four million. Are you hearing me? They came to church with what? Machine. It doesn't take time. When the, okay, when the prophetic comes on your life, it's your day. Every day is God's day, but the day the prophetic lands on you and you receive it is your day. And I'm speaking to somebody. Something is about to shift in your destiny and your life. I wish that amen sound like people that believe me. There is, there is coming a shift, a door, a door of favor, a door of opportunity is about to open to you. If that amen is louder, it's you I'm talking about. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60. We saw it yesterday. I told you this is, this is your scripture that the Gentiles will come. But he didn't stop in verse 3. In verse 10, see what God said. Because there is another aspect of the closure of doors that God will handle this morning. I'm talking about they are bringing some, some blessings to you, but they cannot assess your life. Are you hearing me at all? Yes, there is the type that you try to assess a man's life and it's closed. But this one, they came to assess you and your door was closed. Are you following me? Something closed your door. They brought the blessing. They brought fresh dimensions. They brought fresh grace. But they couldn't pass to you. See what God said in verse 10. Let's read from verse 10. He was telling the church, the, the Israelites. He said, and the sons of strangers shall build your walls and their kings shall minister unto you. For in my wrath I smote thee. But in my favor, somebody shall favor. I've, I have had mercy on you. What will happen in verse 11? Therefore, can I hear the therefore? therefore? Thy gate shall be open how continually. They shall not be shut how day nor night. That what will happen, church? That men may bring on to you the forces of Gentiles. Okay, well, listen, listen to me. Father, give me a sign. Before this evening service, visit somebody with a blessing he never expected. <laughs> And let us hear that testimony today. Because by the time I begin to show you how to open that door, and you will pray, something will happen. I'm not talking about tomorrow. It is the seventh day. He said he will open that door continually, not for show. That men will bring forces of the Gentiles. And I prophesy, if you believe me, the forces of the Gentiles are entering your hand in this season in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every empty-handedness shall be arrested this morning. Every
everything that makes you live life as if you need to struggle before you eat i declare a season of favor men that you don't know will look for you if i hear that amen like thunder is you i'm talking about please sit down he said i will open that door continually I will open that door continually. In Acts chapter 12, verse 7 to 10, we saw the same matter with Peter. He was restricted. I'm just showing you how doors affect our lives. He was restricted in prison, but suddenly an angel came. When the angel came, he took him out. The Bible said there was a particular gate. Now that's the third level of what I'm dealing with this morning. This land will open to you, Pastor A.B. It will open to this church. There is a gate into the land. I saw a scripture. Is it Joshua 1 or so? They got uh, Judges 1. They got to a place and suddenly they were there. But you could see hear them asking. He said, please show us the, the entrance into the city. Ah, you are there. But it's as if, you understand? It's, do you know that there are people who could be in Abuja, but in the realm of the spirit, Abuja doesn't know they are there. How many of you have had dreams? You see yourself in a village. Talk to me. Don't be shy. You see, there is still a battle about your being in Abuja. It's a battle. In the realm of the spirit, you are not here. Your physical body is here. And you can tell by the way you are suffering. That in the midst of this plenty, you can't touch anything. Is somebody hearing me? Those men were not proud. They said, oh, oh yeah, come. <laughs> Show us. We, have not, we, we are here, but we have not entered the city. Because if we enter the city, we should touch what the city carries. Are you hearing me at all? Are you hearing me at all? But today I still prophesy. I have a prophetic grace on my heart. That you will enter the city properly. The city of Abuja shall open to CRM. It shall open to your life. If your amen is louder, it's you I'm talking about. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Quickly, take down these following things quickly. Flames are dismantlers of ancient doors. And mean, the meaning of Asian doors are doors that have resisted those that came before us. It could be even churches that came before us. It could be even ministries that have existed before us. But there's something about flames that they can't resist. They have power to dismantle barriers and break open even the resistance of the enemy. Now, if we notice, we will discover that there are different types of gates and opening. And our, the first one I have here is, the Bible talks of thy gates. So, every man has a gate. Your own gate at times is what God sends to us always. There are encounters, there are encounters that God will want to give you. There are dreams and there are visions that can assess you. It's as if a gate is closed. There are times you discover that direction is a problem. You can't tell where to go. You can't tell what to do. It's a gate that has closed your mind. He said, you have your gate. There is that gate that is yours. And then we also saw everlasting doors. I've already explained that. Ancient family doors that have been locked up then we have gates into the city and then we also we discover that these doors and this gate have some significance the first one is that it is a sign of a shift doors means that you are about to move into something every time door is a matter god is looking at he's saying i want to shift you to some some another level you are moving from one place to the other you can't move without passing through a door if for example you are leaving your inner bedroom and you are going to the parlor there is what a door so every time god begins to open doors he He's saying that he is shifting the person. Number two, doors are opportunities. What God is saying is that I am making available to you fresh opportunities, fresh dimensions, uh, fresh things that there are things you have not touched before that I'm about to unveil to you. And then we also have doors as a as a pathway into understanding. That's why we have what we call the door of understanding. That was in Luke chapter 24 and in verse 45. We see that very, very clearly there. We also have doors of salvation. Suddenly we discover that a church begins to enjoy inflow of the unsaved. A door of salvation has been opened. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. The access to win men to God is a door that God opens. We have door of utterance. 
there are times that you have what to say but those who will hear you are not there you have what to say but people won't hear you there is a door that god opens and that door it, it gives you utterance it's like uh, when christ was preaching one day he was teaching in one place and suddenly they sent some people to come and arrest him when they got there the people that they sent to come and arrest him joined those that were listening by the time they got back to that place, they say, why didn't you bring him in? They say, Kai, we have not heard any man speak like this. Listen, there's an utterance that can capture the heart of men towards you. There's an utterance that God will give you and men will give you listening here. It's the type he said to Jesus, he said, hear him. They say, hear him anointing. And I speak to you again, whether in your business, whether in your career, whether as a church, this is our season of hear him. Whatever has been deaf to what we are saying, God is opening the door of utterance. If I hear that amen loud, is you I'm talking about. Now, how do we, how do we see, how does doors open to people? Please pay attention to this now. In Luke chapter 11 and in verse 1. Luke chapter 11 verse 1. You see, I, I keep, we, we keep going back to the matter of prayer. You see, you can't be a man of flame and not pray. You see, if flames are burning, one of the signs is that you pray. So suddenly they noticed that Jesus was a man that had so much access. He had access. He had, he had uncontrollable access. And the disciples could only count at one thing. We discover our master prays a lot. So the Bible now said, after he had prayed, they came and met him. They said, Master, teach us to pray. It's not teach us how to pray. Are you hearing me? The question was not how. The question is, teach us to pray. If you understand that statement, what he's saying is that, Master, how come you keep at praying? What is your secret that keeps you praying? Because he has noticed, they noticed that as he keeps praying, things open up. They will start praying and in 10 minutes they are tired. In 15 minutes they are tired. In one hour they are tired. But this guy can pray from, from 12 midnight to 6 a.m. And then he starts teaching again. And they said, what's the secret? Look at it everybody. Let, let's, let's, let's see what Christ told them. He said, the first thing I want you to understand is that when you pray, let it be at the back of your heart that you are talking to a father. Is somebody hearing me at all? He said, let, let it be that you are talking to a source. The source of all grace. He said, when you pray, say our father. He was trying to tell them, see prayer as a relationship between a God who owns the whole earth, but is also your father. There's a boldness when you, when you are talking to God as a father. Let that become your way of coming. And then for that one, and then two, that relationship you want to, I want to keep with God keeps me praying. I'm showing you the way to open doors. That there's a consistency in relationship with God. Then he now said, number two, let the kingdom be your priority. Do you want to see doors open? Go beyond self-gratification. Begin to think beyond yourself. Let it be. Because by the time we get to the main junk of this, this teaching, you will notice that the man that got his door open was not looking for that door to open for himself. Oh, you are not with me again. Are you playing with me? That man that went to knock... Are you hearing me? It's in this chapter. Was he looking for bread for himself? It was not for himself. As long as what you are looking for is for self, doors will open. Am I communicating? You must go beyond self. Because the man, the man got to a point, he was almost sleeping. And then suddenly, a, a stranger or a friend came visiting. You know, and then there was nothing in the house. Now, can I ask you a question? Was he not having, hasn't he eaten? He has eaten. You see, the push of this second touch of, of this year's program is that you have enough to give. What the coal of fire did was to sustain you. But what the flames will do is to give you enough to give others because the flame doesn't burn out. Am I communicating? The flames. That's why you saw that the first instance of flames in the scripture. Oh, it's not the first. The first is in Genesis. We see it in the night. The first, the second was in Exodus. He said the bush that burned it. He said God appeared to him as a what? A flame of fire. The bush was burning and was not burnt. What it means is that you have enough, you never lack. Are you hearing what I'm teaching you people at all? But if you don't think kingdom, you can't have enough. Because kingdom, you can't meet kingdom need. You will, you will always want more to meet kingdom need. 
I don't know if I'm communicating. You will always want more. So there was that, that issue of kingdom. Let your kingdom come. He said, you want to see doors open? You want to see doors open to international businesses? Let my kingdom be your priority. Because what they are doing, what, what that doors that is going to be so great, your family can eat it. I don't know if I'm communicating. You don't need more open doors if you are not thinking beyond your sphere. I'm still insisting on this. Let kingdom be your priority. So the Bible now said, after he said all that, he now went to the issue of your daily bread and all that and all that. Then he now gave them a parable. Let's go to verse 11. He gave them a parable in verse 11. Let's see. Okay, is that is that the place? Or is it verse 10? Let me see verse 10, sorry. Give me verse 10. Okay, he's still back. Go to verse 5. Go to verse 5. Let's start from verse 5. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me what? Three loaves. For a friend of mine is in the journey, has come to me, and I have how many? You see? <laughs> oh, I pray that you have a desperation this morning. Because if you think there's another way out, and you don't know that that thing you need is in a, that door that must open. You may not be able to knock. You may not be persistent. It was something as if, if this door doesn't open, this man will die of hunger. I'm not talking about food alone. No. I'm talking about the helplessness of seeing the sick die in your hands. You are held you, but you had no power to raise the sick. And the sick was in your house at midnight. And you said, it can't die in my house. And you left your house and went to the God of all flesh and began to knock on his door and say, Father, that man too that raises the dead, that heals the sick, that anointing, I'm not leaving you. Somebody's dying in my house. But if you already have a mentality of burying people, you will not be that persistent. I know you know what I'm telling people. You see, there are certain embarrassment that will make you desperate. You have not been embarrassed at all. That's why some of us are very, 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 you know, soft. This man knew what it would cost him if that boy dies in his house. There are people tied to our lives, sir. And, and history will judge us that we were light that they saw. You remember one scripture he said, he said, there are wells without water. People, people were hungry and saw you from afar. And they said, that is, that is, that is, that's a child of God. He must have something for me. They got there, they saw no water. It's not a crime not to have water. It's a crime not to cry to God. Not to cry to God that I don't have. The man said, I have nothing. I don't have anything to set before this person. Have you been embarrassed by widows coming to your house and say, help my child? And in sincerity, you want to help, but you don't have. Is somebody hearing me at all? You know, it beats my imagination that Jesus Christ, part of his reward system will be those that were able to bless people. It's, in, it's part of the reward system when life will end. Then why should you be among those that don't have? You don't understand what I'm saying. That at the end time, when God will begin to reward people, He will say, "Let the goats come to this side. Let the have you seen that scripture before? Let the sheep come to this side. And on what basis did He separate them? He said, "When I was in prison, you didn't visit me. He said, "When I was naked, you didn't clothe me." And many of us want to do that, but we don't have. That man said, "I have a friend, but I have no bread." Do you know what the man told him? He said, "I have already gone to sleep. Don't trouble me." It wasn't that I don't have. The silence of God is not that he doesn't have. The friend told him clearly, me I've already slept too. Maybe if you come tomorrow, but he knew that by tomorrow the friend is dead. I hope you hear me at all. There are doors shut against you not because your blessing is not in the door, but because you are not persistent enough to break that door. Are you hearing me at all? The man knew. The man knew that what he needed was where was there. Can I say that scripture quickly? He knew what he needed was there, and he and he from within shall answer and say, "Trouble me not." The door. Somebody say door. Look at door again. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give you. The only mistake that man made was to answer him. That I, that you could answer from inside, then that sleep will never come. <laughs> that you could answer me and say you are already inside. Ah, 
Whatever little sign you get from God, hold him tight. Are you hearing me? Whatever little sign, if you are praying and you felt good pimple, continue to pray. It's a sign that there's something in that door. Are you following me this morning? I'm showing you how to open doors. There is a desperation of kingdom lifestyle. There's a desperation to meet need. If you have been embarrassed. Let's say that scripture quickly. He said, I have, I have done that. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend. Yet, because of what? Of his importunity. He will rise and what? And give him as many as he needed importunity is the key to breaking of doors the insistence that the lamb must hear me you pray to once keep praying it abuja must open see every time we pray like that something is opening already but most times you won't see the sign and then you stop it's just like when you are cutting a tree i hope you know uh, the place we bought we have they cut a lot of tree and they will do like this bam one day i was so i got so you know, worried. I said, this boy, why didn't go and get a saw and cut this thing? But the more they continued, it was going inside. It was going inside. It was, there was one more hit they did. Bam! The tree went down. Every time you pray, something is already opening the realm of the spirit. But most times, you just discover that because the answer has not come, you have not, are you hearing me at all? That importunity, that, that keeping at it, and only flame of fire can make a man keep at it. And that's why that flame will come in a way that you have not had it before. The Bible, the Bible recorded that. He said, for the sake of importunity, he kept at it. He kept at it. He kept at it. And the man rose and gave him. Look at the next verse. What Christ now said in verse 9. The man rose and gave him. And I said to you, ask. And it's what? It shall be given you. Seek. And ye shall find. Can we have another translation? There's one that said, he that keeps asking. He that keeps, yes. And so I tell you what, keep on asking. And you will what? You will receive what you ask for. Keep on doing not again, seeking. And you will do what? You will find. Keep on knocking. And the door will be open to you. The secret of open doors is persistence. It is a keeping at it. No matter what that area that the enemy has formed a barrier and it's as if you are lacking in that area. If you will knock long enough. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Message translation please. If you will knock, knock long enough. Long enough. It will open. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Look at that scripture. He said, in the same way, prayer is what? Is essential in this ongoing warfare. And what is, what he did admonish us? Everybody, what? Pray hard and long. Pray hard and what? And long. Pray hard. You can't open a door by wishing. You open the door by intense praying. By intense praying, you pray hard and long. Revelation chapter 3 and in verse 7. Every time you begin to pray like that, you will be inviting Jesus into the matter. Jesus will never surface without seeing that, that persistence in your, in your cry. Casual seekers don't see him. There is a pressure you put for him to come. How many of you remember Mary? The one that saw him raised from the dead. You will notice that some other apostles came to the graveyard, to the, what's it called, the tomb. And when they got there, they left. I don't have time, I would have gone into that thing with you. They got there, saw that there was nobody there, they left. May God put tenacity in your spirit. This thing I'm talking is only fire that does it. It's fire that does this kind of thing. There's a fire in a man's heart that keeps him at a spot till things change. Do you know they left and then Mary refused to go. She kept praying. Mary kept praying. Do you know an angel even appeared to Mary. Mary says, it's not the angel I'm looking for. You don't have, I just, I just, <laughs> he says it's not the angel. And she 
you know, at times, we want to take over the city and then suddenly we see a local government and we settle down. If the city is what you are looking for, you don't settle for local government. If the city gets to open, is what you want. No matter what you see, you are still at it. Daddy, thank you for the local government, but it's the city we are looking for, Lord. Our voice must be heard in this land. No, we can't continue this way. And you keep at it. Let me tell you, one day, two days, three days, one month, two months, five months, one year. You now I told you yesterday that some of you will pray for two years non-stop. You will, you will have that capacity to stay at it. Is somebody hearing me at all? So every time we say that, look at, look at that revelation quickly. When you press like that, you will invite Jesus. And to, and this morning, that's what I see God doing to us. You will invite Jesus. Revelation chapter 3 verse 7, quickly. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things. Said he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath what? The key of David. He that what? Open it. And no man shut it. And he shut it. And no man open it. Verse 8. Verse 8 quickly. I know your works. Behold, I have what? I have set before you a what? An open door. And no man can shut it. For thou hast what? A little strength. And has kept my word. You don't understand. That in the midst of resistance, you kept at it. In the midst of resistance, you kept at what you think will work. You didn't look for another means to open the door. You didn't begin to play tricks with your someone. You kept at it. You say, I therefore give you an open door. And I prophesy again before everyone here, a door is opening before your life. Amen. An unusual door of favor. An unusual door that will cause men to hear your voice. That door is opening in the name of Jesus. Colossians chapter 4 verse 3 as I begin to round up this morning. That door is opening. That door is opening. I want you to believe me. We will just press a bit. Listen even though you may say but pastor we have not done what you said already. There's another angle to open doors. is the prophetic. When your season comes the day Jesus was put into water and he came out of that water what happened to these heavens? It opened. So there are times where some level of sacrifice based on the prophetic that came on your life opens things for you. Is somebody hearing me at all? There are sacrifices that God will lay in your heart to do. And instantly that door opens. He said, with all praying also for us, with all praying for us, that God would open unto us a what? A door of utterance. I want to close by saying this quickly. That is God that opens those doors. Is somebody hearing me? But he won't open it till he sees that your desperation for that door to open. And don't forget what I've said already. That behind that door, what you need is available. And in this season, God is saying, I'm opening the land to CRM. I'm opening this land to CRM. There is a flame. See, there is a flame that comes that shouldn't be wasted. When that flame comes on your life, God extends your coverage. Is somebody hearing me at all? If the light is brighter, it covers more. If the light is brighter, it covers more. Flames are brighter than smoke. If the light is brighter, it covers more. So it will be unjust to carry such flame and still have the same coverage level. And that's why I know that something is about to expand in the life of somebody this morning. If you will jump to your feet and give God some glory, something is about to happen. I thought you are giving him glory. Something is about to change this morning. Something is about to change this morning. In the name of Jesus. Lift your two hands one more time and say, Father, I thank you for the fresh fire that is coming upon my life now and i know no barrier no gates will stand this fire gates are melting they are being cut asunder open your mouth and talk to god give him thanks there is something about to come on us this morning and there's no gates that will resist that fire there is no gates that will resist that fire in the name of Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8. I'm going to arrest that first. It says Satan hindered us. 
today whatever has hindered you before you came here their powers are broken in the name of jesus first thessalonians 2 verse 8 i want us to read it together he said so being what oh ho oh, oh. ho i think i missed that scripture is this second thessalonians just a minute please all right Okay, just a minute. Okay, 18. Oh, okay. 218, quickly. 218, not 8, quickly. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul. There's, there's a wealthy man that has been trying to come to you, but one devil in your village will not allow it. Today, we raise a fire of judgment over everything hindering your life. He said, he said, see, he said, once and again, once and again, I tried. Your husband wants to come, but Satan is hindering him. That door of the devil is scattered in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice. Say, my father, my father. Oh, I'm not here in this church. Say, my father, my father. Every resistance, every resistance against that blessing, against that open door, let your fire of judgment visit that resistance. Please, I beg you, you came early not to pray. Can I hear your voice like people who mean what you're saying? Whatever is stopping that appointment, we wanted to give you that appointment. Every time we try, something hindered us. In Jesus' name. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Listen. I was in the office. Somebody came to the church. It's not a member. So we sat down. He was talking to me. He says, sir, do you know, I didn't believe that powers can fight me. I'm a believer. But something happened that gave me that, you know, concern now. They gave him a contract. Multinational company gave him a contract, sent it to his email. Called him. Have you received it? He said, he will check. That is, after like maybe one week ago, he checked, he didn't see it. Called him, I can't find it. Before you know the date, elapsed. Then he saw it. Email. And somebody else took it. Not once, not twice. They will, they will send it, but he can't see it. I had to lay hands on his head. I'm sure he's watching me now. That was last two weeks. And I know it has stopped. Because you see, some of us are ignorant of these things. We just think it's normal. That's why you can't survive without fire. Lift your two hands again. Say everything hindering my life. Hindering my ministry. Hindering our church. Father, let your judgment come on that satanic door. Open your mouth and pray. Something is breaking already. Every satanic door of resistance. Every satanic door of resistance. Marital resistance. Financial resistance. Father, we ask that the fire, the judgmental fire, we begin to burn such doors. And I prophesy that door is opening now. Whatever Satan has blocked before today. In the name of Jesus. Genesis 40 verse 23. This one will be practical. Somebody that has not spoken to you in a long time will call you today. Genesis, what? Yes. Read it together. I want to go. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph. But what happened? Forgot. Not forget, forgot. Forgot means he didn't even know he existed. I'm not joking. Something happened one time before you came, sir. You know my friend, um, Pastor Gabe. You know it was, yeah. Or oh, the other place. So when you now invited me to church, he now looked at me. He said, how come I didn't invite you? All these years. <laughs> he 
forgot. <laughs> I'm not joking. He was screaming. What happened? What happened? What, what happened? <laughs> Lift your two hands. <laughs> Can you pray that prayer with all your energy? Say, my father, my father. Every access to the palace. And the enemy has closed the mind of that man or woman. Let him become restless. Remember me, Lord. Open your mouth and pray. Whatever has blocked that access of that open door to the palace. Father, we bring them under pressure. We bring them under pressure. We bring them under pressure. They are looking for my number. They are looking for me right now. We bring them under pressure. I thought you are praying. Whoever forgot you and closed the door into the palace. We bring them under pressure right now. A Kalea Bala Shekatea, a Ketu Sokuta, Le Katekaliadas, Le Mande Katelia, 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 a Kaladosita, Le Katekadosia, a Katu Sokuta, Le Katekalia. Are you praying at all? It will take prayer to open that door. It will take prayer to open that door. In Kaladosia. In Jesus' name. Hear this testimony that will help you pray. I saw a young man just like my, um, like, um, okay, very young in church there. He has a tailoring shop by the side of the church. But I saw that he was just doing, you know, it wasn't a serious thing he was doing. So I called him, took my hand, bam, on his head. I said, senators will look for you to sew for them. He's where? He's in Makode. But I speak to you today, he's sewing for senators in this town. This town. I even think he's even around himself. He told me he was coming to Abuja. In less than three, four months, he bought a car, bought land, small boy. He says he's going to start building now. Your time has come also. Amen. Even if you have money, more is coming for kingdom. Amen. Is somebody hearing me at all? I'm saying when season comes, manifestation is not a struggle. Lift your two hands, somebody. Say, Father, what stop my father? Cannot stop me. Every ancient door that was closed against us by the prophetic utterance that my time has come all you ancient door be lifted now open your mouth something is happening every ancient door that resisted my father resisted those before me resisted churches in, in Abuja can you be lifted right now it is our season open now Zekeya, Talande, Teketo, Lekusiataka, Lekende Ketunia. I speak to somebody, Ekela Pelotia, Ekela Pelotia. They are looking for you. They are looking for you. They are looking for you. Kalate Ketusia, Eketuseketa, Lemende Ketonia, Lemende Ketonia. They are looking for you. Ekala Teas, Zulade Ketea, Eketusotonia, Ekatania, Ela. My time is up. Zule teke tekelia. Iladas satekete ike tekeliatas. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift your hands high and get ready for a touch of God this morning before we leave here. Just lift your hand high. When I call Jesus, you will scream, Open my doors. Something must break. Doors that need to be uprooted will be uprooted. The Bible said there was an earthquake and all the doors were open. Not one door. Lift your hands high. He said, I will open and no man will shut. Only Jesus does that. So when I call Jesus, said, open my doors. Don't say door, doors. Jesus. Open my doors. It is you they are calling Lord. It is you they are calling Lord. It is you they are calling Lord. Le proto sukata ila Jesus. Shakale 
me kataria. You are the one that opens and nobody shuts. Kelande keteya, lemande keteya. Jesus. Number four, Jesus. Number five, Jesus. Number six, Jesus. Now lift your hands high. I saw pressure coming on men now. There's a pressure. There's a pressure. A pressure for your blessing. Wombs that have been closed are opening also. Every closed womb. Every closed womb. Every closed womb. Businesses that were shut down. Businesses shut down. They are opening back. At this count of Jesus, this seventh count, don't stop shouting. Don't stop shouting. He said, I will open. He said, I have the key of David. I open nobody's shots. There are doors that men can open and men will shut it. But when Jesus opens it, no devil can shut it. That ministry, it is time for it to be open in the land. This church, it is time for it to be open to the land. A land uh, when I say seven, Jesus, you scream and don't stop. Just keep calling him. So uh, you will feel a power come on you. You will feel a presence come on you. Are you ready? Number seven, Jesus! Yes, Lord. 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 Let the doors open. Let the doors open by force. We break some open. We declare your doors are open now. Something is happening. Something is happening. You may not understand. Yes. A door, a door of favor, a door of appointment. In the Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. I will hear your testimony. I said I will hear your testimony. And it's not going to be tomorrow. From today. From today. Father, give us signs. In the name of Jesus.